Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our very last section of Linear Algebra, Chapter 7, Part 2. And we're going to get this section started with some scientific notation. Now, a scientific notation, we want to make a very big number, just like so for number 1, into a smaller shorthand version of that number. So how do we do that with scientific notation? We only want one number, one actual number to the left of the decimal. So our decimal would be right here. But there are nine numbers. We want to move that so there is only one number in front of the decimal. So let's go ahead and move that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we want only one number in front of the decimal. So I'm going to put that decimal right here. So I'm going to put two point three four and now take it times ten and now we're going to put for x one how many t places did we move the decimal we move it one two three four five six seven eight times so it's going to be two point three four times ten to the eighth now let's look at two we have a decimal in the back so I'm going to move it so there's only one number to the left of the decimal Right here, there is only one number to the left of the decimal, so now I put three point. Now these zeros are important in between because they hold the place of the five. We do not need these zeros in the back because I have my last number, and the number I put here, which is seven, tells me how many places I move the decimal. So if we would have to go back, I would just have to move it to the right seven places. Next, we are asked to graph the function, find the y-intercept, and state the domain and range of the function. Now, this is not in slope-intercept form because our variable x is an exponent. So what do we have to do now? We can pick very nice numbers, as in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. You will always pick these numbers for this type of problem, right, just to keep our numbers nice and small and condensed. So we are always going to pick these numbers for this type of problem. So let's go ahead and plug it in for x. So negative 2 in for x. I go 2 to the negative second minus 3. Now you can just go ahead and type it in to your calculator and you will find out that it's negative 2.75 and do the same thing with the rest of them. 2 to the negative first minus 3 is negative 2.5 then 0 2 to the 0 minus 3 equals a negative 2 and then finally 2 to the first minus 3 is a negative 1 so let's go ahead and graph these remember we have x and we have y so x is negative 2 and I'm going to go down negative 2.7 right about there then I go over negative 1, down 2.5. I stay at 0, I go down 2. I go to the right 1 because it's positive, but I still go down 1 for the negative. So we plotted all the points. Once you plot all the points, go ahead and connect the dots to the best of your ability. And so if I knew I plotted more points, I know my graph would rise up sharply. So when you plot your points, make sure that it doesn't continue over here, that it rises up sharply. Now we are asked to find the y-intercept. Well, where does our graph pass through the y-intercept? Right here at 0, negative 2. And so again, that is your y-intercept. And now we're asked to state the domain. Remember, the domain is your x values. So the domain are the domain is, rather, those numbers right there. And then the range is the y values, which are those numbers right there. Next, moving on to the growth and decay function, where we have A, so your amount, your final amount equals your P principle times the quantity 1 plus your rate divided by the number of times you compound it per the year. And then you close that up to the power of the number of times you compound it times the number of years it is in the bank. So let's see what a problem like this looks like. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and label everything that we know. So P is your principal. So what is your principal? It's the amount you have. Well, I have 2,000 
$500. So that's going to be my P. How about your N? N is the number of times you compound it per year. Well, it's compounded monthly. Well, what is monthly? How many months are in a year? There are 12 months in a year, so N is going to be 12. What about my rate? You, you, you will usually find your rate as a percent, so it's 2%, but we have to be very careful because we want to change it to a decimal, so it's going to be 0 0.02. And then finally, time in years is 10 years, so we're going to put 10. So let's see now if we can plug everything into our equation. So we have A equals our P is $2,500. And then we have from our formula 1 plus, now our rate is 0 0.02, so it's 0 0.02, and that goes over my n, which is 12, and I close that up, and again I have to write 12 for compounded monthly times the time in years, which is 10. So I simplify this up. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So I am go A equals 2,500. And then I'm still going to keep this as a fraction over 12. So there it is, all cleaned up. And now just go ahead and type this all into your calculator. Make sure your parentheses are in the right spots. And so we come up with $3,052.00. And 998 cents. Well, we can't have this, so we're going to round up. And we round up to $3,053 and no cents. Now, also with this N, I do want to point out that if it says quarterly, how many times does quarterly happen in a year? It happens four. How about semi annually? Two, how about annually? Would just be one. Now moving to a geometric sequence. A geometric sequence is just multiplying to find your next term. So starting with five, we are asked to find the next three terms in the geometric sequence. So how do I go from three to six? How do I go from six to twelve? Well, I know that three times 2 is 6. Does it work for 6? Six? 6 times 2 is 12. Perfect. Let's see if it works one more time. Times 2 is 24. Awesome. So I can find my next term by multiplying it by 2. Okay. Well, let's say I didn't know. Let's say these numbers were a lot tougher. I could always go backwards and divide 6 by 3 to find that it's 2. So to move backwards, you divide. Move forwards, you multiply. Real quick again, you take the number in front, you divide it by the number in back to get 2. So now we know that we're multiplying by 2 going forward. So we take 24 times 2, which is 48 for the first number. Then the second number, again, I take it times 2 to get 96. And then I take 96 times 2 because that is how I'm finding my next terms to get 192. Now, looking at 6. 6 looks awfully alike number 5, but I'm going positive to negative. Well, when I go to positive to negative, I would just have to take that times negative 2. Uh-oh, but now I go from negative to positive. But what happens if I would take that times a negative 2? Would that be positive 12? Absolutely, because we have a negative times a negative to give me a positive 12. And now, how about times a negative 2? Positive 12 times a negative 2 would give me negative 24. So let's go ahead and find our next three terms. So I multiply negative 24 by a negative 2 to get a positive 48. But now I take it times another negative 2 to get negative 96. And another negative 2 to get 192. See what happened when we're taking it by a negative? Take it in times a negative. We go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And that pattern will continue until your sequence is over. Now, 
we are still working with the geometric sequence here. And this is the formula for the geometric sequence. And now again, a sub n is the final term, a sub 1 is the first term, r is the ratio, n is the number of terms. These two guys right here should look familiar to you because we had them in the arithmetic sequences. So these should look a little bit familiar. R is the first time you've seen R, and N we have seen N before, just used in a different way. So now we're going to write the equation for the nth term of the geometric sequence. So what we have to do is write something that looks like that. So we're looking, A sub N is your final term. We do not know what that final term is, but we do know what the first term is. That first term is 3. Well, what's the difference? How do we get to the next term? I hope you guessed it, that it is, that it is times 2, times 2. So our r is 2, and our n, do we know how many terms we have? No, we do not know how many terms we have, so I'm going to leave it as a question mark. So here we go as I plug everything in. I have a sub n because I do not know. What is my first term? My first term is 3, so I write down 3. Then I take that times 2 because that's my r. 2 is my r. And then how many terms do I have? I do not know how many terms I have, so I have n minus 1 from your formula. And this would be your answer. Now, we could use this if we were looking for the fifth term of the sequence. All we would have to do is plug, as I change my color, all we have to do is plug a number in for that n. So if we were looking for the fifth term, I would just plug 5 in for there. If I was looking for the hundredth term, I would plug 5 in there. If I was looking for the thousandth term, I would look, or I'd plug my thousand in for n and come up with my final term. And the very last one, is the recursive formula and that is stated right here and now it's a different way to look at some things as we have a new term which is the previous term so let's take a look to see how it look, works we are asked to find the first three terms of this sequence well I know that a sub 1 is always going to be my first term so I am going to say that my first term is already 3. Now, to find your second term, a sub n minus 1 is my previous term, right? Well, what is my previous term? My previous term is 3, so I'm going to take that 3 and plug it in for that a sub n minus 1. So here we go. I take 2, which is from the formula, and then times 3, which is from the previous term, which is right there, and then plus 6 again. So that will give me 6 plus 6, which is 12. So the second term is 12. And then finally, the third term. How do you find the third term? From this formula, I go 2 times what is my previous term? So I have, I'm on my third term. What is my previous term? Going down the line, it is 12. So I'm plugging 12 in for my previous term. And then plus 6, which gives us 24 plus 6. 24 plus 6 is, as I switch colors, 30. So our answers are 3, 12, and 30. And that does it for Chapter 7, Part 2. Good day.